Hey, Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. A uh, quick introduction to the video that follows. I talk about a big, smelly, creamy, white-colored Amanita mushroom called Amanita ravenelli. And I talk about Amanita, the species section Lepidella throughout the video. Uh, we do have some changes going on, and um, I believe that the mushroom that I discuss and a lot of other ones will be best described as Amanita section Roanokensis, as opposed to Amanita section Lepidella. This is relatively new information, and I am not a mycologist, but rather a hobbyist mushroom hunter. So when I say uh, Lepidellas, I'm more almost using it in a way like a common name, uh, as opposed to its official designation. So Amanita Anita ravenelli and a variety of others. Like if you start to research them, you will see Lepidella and also uh, in later or you know more recent sources, Amanita section Roanokensis, like Roanoke, Virginia, being used. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, also, if you are interested in supporting the work that I do or supporting the channel, I uh, make mushroom art t-shirts uh, and you can get yourself one at mushroomanna.com if you are interested. Uh, I've got a few botanical illustrations of some of my favorite summer mushrooms and also an Amanita that has circuit board traces attached to the bottom of it because I kind of like techie stuff. And uh, so anyway, if that is of interest to you, go check it out. Thank you so much for your attention and good luck with those Amanitas as they shift around between uh, different species sections and names. Hey Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I'm spending some of my 4th of July uh, day off to hang out with this uh, odious smelling Amanita mushroom that I believe to be Amanita ravenelli. Uh, common name is pine cone mushroom. Not an edible species, not that you would want to. Like this is one of those fruiting bodies that would be delicious if you were a certain kind of beetle and you wanted to, uh, you know, oftentimes when I find these mushrooms, you have just beetles uh, occupying all of these really deep, creamy gills, and it has a very pungent, unpleasant chlorine aroma. And so Amanita ravenelli, Amanita ropalopus, which is a similar species, uh, and I think there's an Amanita chlorinosum. I'm not sure if that's the right species epithet. Anyway, there are numerous mushrooms in the Amanita genus that have this uh, really strong sort of, uh, I like to call it a peed in pool aroma. So it's it's funky and chlorine at the same time. Uh, and so, you know, they're not mushrooms that you'd want to eat, but they're really cool because they have just such ginormous macroscopic features. And taking pictures of them is also kind of challenging because even though, as you can see, it's got all kinds of, uh, you know, warts and what you would call appendiculate partial veil material. So that's this appendiculate is stuff that hangs on the edge of a, a perimeter of a cap and you have, uh, you know, uh, staining going on at the base, all kinds of stuff. Uh, the coloration of these mushrooms means that you have to be a little bit uh, fiddly with taking pictures to get good contrast. Anyway, I digress. So Amanita ravenelli and its relatives uh, belong to a section of the Amanita genus called, Am uh, called the Lepidella section. There are some changes going on, so um, a lot of this is subject to change, but the long and short is if you are in uh, North Carolina or, you know, the southeastern U.S. throughout the summertime and mushroom season, you will find a whole lot of sort of creamy colored, big, ginormous mushrooms. Some of them smell bad, some of them don't, but in general, you can call those lepidellas and that can inform your research. In terms of Amanita uh, ravenelli in particular, let me uh, dive into the identification features. And I will also, as I hit them, um, these features are often shared by like the totality of of uh, Lepidella mushrooms. So it should help you get in the right direction. But in general, you know, Lepidellas are not, uh, they're listed as inedible or I think toxic in some places or unknown. I think the, the truth of the matter, as far as the science is concerned, I, I, I mean, unknown is, is something that I uh, think is probably the most accurate description because I cannot imagine uh, eating this. And, you know, again, this is a mushroom that is designed to attract beetles and insects and flies and so it definitely is serving as a fruiting body to spread spores, but just not by way of the, um, you know, mammalian or uh, human vector 
if you will. Okay, so let's look at this mushroom. First of all, uh, like all mushrooms in the Amanita genus, the uh, Lepidellas are cap and stem mushrooms, and they have um, a uh, an enlarged bulbous base. And so this is a, a pretty good example of what you'll see with a lot of a uh, lot of Lepidellas. But uh, you know, it is really besides the <laughs> the size and the color uh, being dead giveaways, and then the smell once you approach it. Most of the Lepidella uh, species have some sort of bulb at the base, and Amanita ravenelli is noted as having a pretty large bulb at the base. Uh, another mushroom that looks similar, and you know, you sometimes can get them confuddled, and I'm working on, is Amanita ropalopus, and it also has sort of a bulbous base, but it's smaller, uh, is how it's described. And so, you know, that's one thing that puts me in the direction of um, an identification in the field without anyone, you know, verifying what I uh, have uh, guessed at uh, is why one of the reasons why I think this is Amanita ravenelli. So, but you have this sort of like tuber carroty looking thing at the base, and carroty is also oftentimes a really appropriate uh, word to use because you can sometimes have a little bit of orangey staining happening, and uh, the consistency you'll often see with this bulb like little uh, cracks, and uh, it almost looks like. Um, almost starts to take on the look of fissured bark. And let me get the larger specimen because that has a very distinct view of the splits and cracks that can also turn into almost what look like these big square scales at the base here. So let me collect this here. Okay. And these are also just, these mushrooms are so hefty. Uh, you know, one of the things is like, look at this. I mean, it is ludicrous. It is just everything that I could possibly want. It's very admirable, even though it smells really bad. And um, well, I, uh, I, I just will caution you, this is a sidebar, don't collect uh, you know, lepidella mushrooms and then leave them in your car overnight. I did that once and it was not a good idea. I will never do it again. But let's uh, look at this larger specimen here. So as you can see, you know, we have this big bulbous base and then a lot of cracks uh, that have started to start here. And you'll see that also um, a lot with uh, Amanita dausipes, which is a similar species and looks very similar, uh, but it is not so much chlorine smelling as like uh, meaty or ham smelling. Uh, my understanding as well is that the, uh, you know, sort of orangey staining can be more drastic with Amanita dausipes, which is what earns it the common name carrot foot. But all of these, you know, all of this is academic. This like, I want to identify this mushroom as best as I can, and I'm going to compare my notes with my friends. But the long and short, it's like, this is ludicrous and ridiculous, and it just makes me so happy. And, uh, uh, you know, because it smells like chlorine, I'm, I'm going in the direction of one uh, big bulbous cracked footed one uh, species over another. Okay, so you have the big bulbous foot. And with other Amanitas, you oftentimes have a different kind of base. Uh, so, you know, you can have swollen bases. You can have just a little bit of uh, sort of powdery stuff at the base. Sometimes you have a really distinct cup or egg, but the Lepidellas, they're, you know, these, these big bulbs. And sometimes they go really deep into the soil. Sometimes they are kind of uh, short. Here is an immature specimen of this mushroom as well. So you can see in the case of this Amanita uh, ravenelli, you have a pretty significant and uh, fully formed uh, bulbous base even before the mushroom's cap starts to get big. And uh, to that point, you know, when you see these mushrooms coming up and they're even a little bit smaller than this guy, they can look like uh, a whole bunch of little chess pieces. And the caps themselves are a teeny tiny little, you know, um, um, sort of ping pong ball size thing, but these uh, bases are very swollen and enlarged kind of from the very beginning. And you can see, you know, this, this cracking and whatnot uh, is, is very distinctive on this collection. Okay, so we talked about the, um, the base. Let's talk about the ring on the stem. So what you can see here with this immature one is uh, that partial veil. So a partial veil uh, is basically a layer of protective tissue that covers the baby mushroom's gills. And so when it breaks, it leaves this material that's, as I mentioned, that's called appendiculate. Uh, so you have these big shags of partial veil, uh, typically with this species. And that's uh, kind of uncommon. Like I have a good example 
of a nice little blushing Amanita right here. And oftentimes, you know, that partial veil ends up as just a little dainty ring on the stem that can come off very easily in many, many species of, of uh, the Amanita genus. I just want to point this at you. So this is a cute little blusher with a very dainty stem or, a, you know, dainty stem and um, delicate partial veil. But in the case of these uh, big honkin' lepidellas, sometimes that partial veil doesn't stick as a ring on the stem so much as it sticks as shags, or sometimes you have both. Uh, and, you know, these actually only went appendiculate, but often uh, I will find these mushrooms and they'll have like some that's attached to the uh, margin of the cap and some that makes a big, uh, robust and very felty sort of ring on the, the stem. And here is a piece of that material. So it, uh, as I said, it's kind of felty. It's a little bit crumbly on the outside uh, and felty on the inside. So that's how you end up with that sort of, uh, you know, skirty looking situation, appendiculate uh, partial veils. All right, the final remark I want to make about uh, Amanita ravenelli, as opposed to other Amanitas in um, Amanita section Lepidella, uh, and sidebar, like Amanita section Lepidella, I think they're splitting it into uh, Amanita roanokensis and some other, uh, some new classification is happening. So, you know, this information is like my field knowledge that I can take out to my fav favorite office park and screw around and try to identify mushrooms. But, um, you know, the, when I say lepidellas that may shift, morph and change and that species section may end up being renamed. But anyway, so when it comes to Amanita ravenelli and similar species, you oftentimes have uh, warts on the cap. And this mushroom, you can see it has these very, uh, radially aligned warts. So it's very nice and symmetrical uh, from this central point. Also, these warts are fully attached to a pale cap. And that's one of the things that uh, with a lot of other uh, big warty amanitas, these uh, warts can be powdery or chunky or come off easily, and they're not as uh, neatly patterned and arranged. And also the sort of like nice scaly uh, brown edges. There's a lot of photographs of Amanita ravenelli that really uh, are characterized by that. Whereas if you were to compare it with say um, some pictures of I think uh, Amanita ropalopis is probably the most similar species to this one, that uh, it's more powdery and chaotic and you can remove the warts uh, more easily. And again, I'm still working on this stuff, but uh, you know, I, I see a lot of these and you can't not see them because they can be so ginormous. But here's another uh, good look at the, the top of the cap. You can see that these, uh, you know, sort of, they're sort of fibrous, but they're more almost like scales that are radially aligned, at least in this case. Uh, and, you know, as uh, they're rained on or damaged, that can be, uh, that can present differently. But that is the main reason. So like besides the size of the bulbous base and the smell being chlorine, these uh, sort of radial, radially aligned and well attached warts are what uh, point me in the direction, again, of Amanita ravenelli, as opposed to Amanita ropalopis or uh, Amanita dalcipes, which smells like a ham sandwich, um, and any of the other mushrooms in this area. So again, I just love to take pictures of these. They're so uh, like egregiously smelly. I, uh, you know, obviously am not all that interested in like their uses to me besides just being uh, a delight to encounter. And also it is fun when I see them and, you know, I go to take a picture and I see a huge infestation of adorable little black uh, beetles living in these uh, creamy, deep, delicious, stinky gills. Cause it's like, all right, these mushrooms are doing somebody a lot more good than they would do me as a food source and uh, a source of habitation. Uh, but, uh, you know, I still love to find and identify them. All right. Anyway, I hope you are finding plenty of mushrooms and that you get good rain. Uh, wash your hands. Don't take these and leave them in your car overnight. And we will talk next time.